Hello everyone, my name is Anna and welcome to my YouTube channel, True Lupe. Today's video is actually part two of my seminary mini-series. Uh, the first video was just, I shared my journey to seminary and kind of my testimony, how I ended up in seminary. And today's video, we are going to be talking about what is seminary? How do you pay for seminary? How long is seminary? What are some of the highlights of seminary? What are some of the downfalls of seminary? So I hope to answer all of your questions. And if I don't answer your question, please feel free to leave a comment below or reach out to me via Instagram by DMing me and I would be happy, happy, happy to talk to you. Before we dive into today's video, I would like to invite you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel. My goal through True Blue Faith is just to be a space on the internet that you can come to and feel encouraged and be challenged and grow in your faith and by subscribing, I would be so honored to walk alongside your faith journey with you. So I feel like as I talk about what seminary is and stuff, I feel like a lot of these topics such as money and year and stuff and just discerning a specific call can also relate to graduate school in general. So if you are not thinking about seminary but you're thinking about a graduate school program, you are also in the right spot. So as I said, I already shared my journey to seminary Make sure to check that out in part one. I feel like now is a time, it's a new year, it's January, so now is a time when people are starting to either think about what they're gonna do after graduation, when they graduate in May. So they're really starting to look ahead and maybe you have already applied to seminary but you wanna know what to expect this upcoming fall or summer. And so that is kind of why I'm making this video now because these big events of either starting seminary or applications, uh, they're gonna be here in literally zero time. It's gonna go by so fast. So not to stress you out, but hopefully this video can help you discern and answer any of your questions. So the first question I want to answer builds off part one. I kind of ended this video with who is qualified to go to seminary? You are qualified to go to seminary. There is no specific qualifications. You do not need to have grown up as a pastor's kid. You do not need to have grown up as a missionary kid and you traveled everywhere. Literally, at seminary, the call can fall on anyone at any time of their life. And if you have been blessed with that call, it truly, truly, truly is such a blessing. Um, and it's a call not to take lightly. There is a lot of work and a lot of time and energy that goes into it. So you definitely want to make sure that you are being responsible with it. The next thing is what exactly is seminary? So seminary is different from Bible college. Seminary is a graduate leveled program that is specifically for theology. Um, so seminaries offer, some seminaries offer PhD programs. I attend Truett Seminary. I'm wearing my gear and representing. Sometimes they are individual and like their own type of school and then other times they're connected with colleges. For example, Truett Seminary is connected with Baylor University, another seminary, a uh, Wartburg Seminary in Iowa is connected with Wartburg College. So those are just two examples, but then there's also like Southwestern, which is its absolutely own campus, own school and everything. But yeah, seminaries usually offer um, an MDiv program, so Masters of Divinity. I'm reading my notes. And they usually offer, P some offer PhD programs. So True offers a PhD in preaching. There also is like the Masters of arts, the MA, and there's also Masters of Theology, which is something else. So anyways, and then you can also pair your seminary degree with another degree. So you can pair your seminary, your Masters of Divinity degree with a social work degree, or True it even offers Masters of Divinity with a law degree, um, MBA. So, so if you're interested in continuing your education in some type of theology, you'll probably end up at seminary. Okay, so the next question is, who should go to seminary? So if you are interested in working in ministry at any capacity, seminary might be for you. I would say that if you hope to one day be in a teaching position at a church, such as being a pastor, an associate pastor, some type of teaching and leadership position, you should definitely, definitely, definitely strongly consider seminary. If you want to get a PhD in theology, seminary is a, like a step that you will have to take. So literally, seminary can be for anyone. It used to be just for people who wanted to become 
pastors, but that's not the case anymore. Uh, one of my friends wants to be a sports chaplain. Another one of my friends wants to go on to get her PhD. Another one of my friends wants to go into mission work, um, perhaps overseas or even countryside and in a church. So, oh, and then another one of my friends wants to be a Christian publishing editor. Like, literally your options are endless. Seminary is not just for a specific person um, that wants to go and be a pastor. You can literally do so much with a seminary education. The next um, question is why should you go to seminary? I think that the most valuable thing that I have learned at seminary is definitely the history of the church. I had no idea. Um, we've learned about the canonization of the Bible, we've learned about church fathers, all the heretics. Okay, wait, here's a funny story. My first class in seminary, it was a Monday night, we read about Gnosticism. And literally, as I was reading, I was like, oh, like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Like, I, well, I was not ready for it. I was like, oh, like, Gnosticism kind of makes sense, like something coming down from the sky and being in our hearts, like, okay, like, that's an interesting take, but sure. And then I get to class and the professor's like, that's heresy, like, that's not right, that's heretical. And I was, <laughs> I was in for it. That literally happened every class that semester. So learning about the history of the church, learning about the background of what you believe and helping understand why you believe what you believe is so so important and seminary is most often a really safe place to do that where you are being challenged with different beliefs and then seminary is a way where you can grow in your own way and understand your values and understand your beliefs and be able to put them in words so that you can go out and share them with the world the next question is what are the requirements of seminary and it really depends on what your track is. So for example, my track as an MDiv student, I'm getting my Master's of Divinity, consists of like 85 credits. So I am in year two of a three-year program. I am kind of really pushing through it. I would love for it to be a four-year program, but or it is a, it can be a four-year program. And I would love to be able to take that fourth year, but I'm also really excited to just step into this next stage of life. So the requirements usually consist of church history, scriptures, classes, um, if you're getting a Masters of Divinity, Biblical languages, Greek and Hebrew, and then some, a few electives, and spiritual formation or spiritual discipline courses. So I feel like that is kind of a pretty general consensus of what seminary degrees usually require. Okay, so now that we've laid the foundation about seminary, the big question is what seminary should you attend? I obviously go to Truett Seminary. I'm in my second year. This video is by no means telling you to go to Truett Seminary. I love Truett Seminary and I would love if everyone could join me there, but there are a lot of different seminaries out there that have a lot of different teaching foundations. If you watched part one of this, you will know that I pretty much did zero research when it came to seminaries and I am so thankful and so blessed that I ended up at Truett because it could have gone really bad. For example, let's say if I ended up at a seminary that didn't allow women to be pastors because I didn't do research. I feel a call to be a pastor. That would have been heartbreaking for me to be at one of those seminaries. So I know I got lucky and I know that is not the case for anyone. So do your research on different seminary options. Your research can consist of looking up their values, looking up their professors and seeing what their professors studied when they got their PhDs, what did they write their dissertations on, and seeing if there are some similarities that line up. Another thing that I would really recommend is looking up and seeing how they are responding to today's modern issues. What are they saying about the conversations that are going on in the church right now? And where is their voice? Are they on the back burner and not involved? Um, and if so, are you okay with that? Or do you want to be in these conversations that are going on in the church right now? And do you want to learn about them and learn how to wrestle with them and come to your own conclusions? I would also say to look for a seminary that is very open-minded. So I am a Lutheran attending a Baptist seminary. Most of the students there are Baptist, but there is another, at least I know another Methodist. I think I'm the only Lutheran in my class. But anyways, they're open to other denominations, which just makes it really great 
pests the way that they teach about denominations in general is very respectful. So you can learn about different de denominations in a respectful way, and then with learning about it respectfully, you can then take what you've learned and go to your own and draw your own conclusions. Okay, the next question is, should seminary be taken online or in person? So I would definitely say the, this, that COVID has changed universities and classrooms as we know it may not look the same for a really long time, if ever again. I definitely think the online option for classes is going to be more widely available in the future. If you are at a stage of life where you can take time to do in-person classes, I would re recommend that. Getting to know your cohort, getting to know your classmates and people who are being challenged in the same way as you has been so important for me in my seminary journey and I would imagine that it is also very, it would be very important for anyone. So the best way to build those relationships and build friendships like that where you can trust and discuss these really hard things, I think is probably by building them in person. So I would definitely recommend looking at an in-person seminary program. However, online programs have changed for good. They are more personable, they are more intimate now. It's not just like, you know, you will never meet your professors. I think that either online or in person, both are great options. If you're looking towards online, I would recommend making sure you have a set schedule where you know that you are going to have this class or you're going to work on this class this day and this class that day. When Truett went online for COVID, I had the hardest time staying motivated. There's a lot of other things going on in the world and some of my classes moved to, I think it's asynchronous, where they don't meet at the same time. And they were so hard to make myself do it because I wanted to be watching the news or picking up a new hobby, like starting a YouTube channel. So I would say if you do online, you need to be motivated and you need to have people that will hold you accountable and make sure you're doing your work. And yeah, I would also say make sure that you have a separate study space and anywhere in your house. Maybe you go to a coffee shop, maybe you go to a local library if it's safe, or you just have a corner in your house that is, when I sit in that corner, I am doing school. Okay, next question is full-time versus part-time. So full-time versus part-time. I am currently a full-time student. I take 12, 12 credit hours a semester and that makes me a very full-time student. Or part-time students usually either also have a family or have a full-time job that they are also juggling. We have a couple of part-time students in my class and I would like to say that if you are thinking about going to seminary and you have a family or a full-time job, you're amazing. I am literally so amazed by the part-time students who are able to juggle all these things and then there's even full-time students who are juggling all those things and I can hardly take care of myself and Homer and get everything done. So if you're someone looking at part-time because you're juggling other things, you're amazing and do it because it can be done. If you have the ability to kind of drop a lot of things and spend a lot of time in school and do full-time, um, I would recommend that. Also, I mean, that's what I do, so I would definitely recommend that. And I think that would be a, a wise decision if you don't have other things going on. So the next question is, what is the time commitment of seminary? So my seminary program, the minimum for your Master's of Divinity is three years. Uh, the Master's of Arts is two year minimum. And I am, to get done in three years, like I am really taking full course loads. I did a little research. Most seminaries are three to six year programs. And that is longer than your typical graduate program, which is usually one to two years. If you're going into seminary and you wanna get done really quick, that's what I'm doing. And I don't know if I would really say that that's the smartest move. I want to get back home, I want to get back to Des Moines, so that's why I'm doing it, but what I would do for a little bit of extra time in some of those really challenging classes, um, I would do anything. So if I could have dropped a class to really spend more time in a hard class, I would do that. So I'd say it's something to think about is just being flexible. Unless you are very determined, the minimum time might not actually be the most reasonable or most practical. When you look at this time commitment, you may think, Ugh, some things might have to be put on hold in my life. And that's true. Some things might, will be put on hold in your life if you're going to seminary. And I wanna say that that's okay. As a 25 year old, I see my friends who are really starting to excel in their careers. And I have other friends who 
are starting to have families and children and I'm so excited for them and sometimes I wish that that could be me but I also know that things just are on hold right now and that's okay because I believe I am right where God wants me. So if you're kind of in that situation, things are on hold right now, you look at others and start to compare yourself and maybe it doesn't give you the best feeling inside, stop comparing yourself to others and I want to encourage you that you are right where God wants you. The next question is about money. How much does seminary cost? Seminary is expensive. I googled this again. On average, annual tuition is $20,000 a year. That does not include living, that does not include books, that does not include if you want to travel abroad for a class. So it does get expensive. I am very fortunate that I am on a significant scholarship that covers a lot of my tuition. These scholarships are offered through Truett Seminary as well as through the Sports Ministry Program, but I also know that other seminaries offer scholarships as well. So when you are looking at seminaries, that might be another thing to look into is what are their scholarship options and how much is it going to cost you? Although seminary is really important and um, can really form your faith, I don't think it's necessarily a place where you want to go to get into extreme, extreme debt. A little bit of debt is fine. I would say look at scholarship options. Um, your school might not offer them, and if that's the case, it is okay to fundraise. Okay, sorry if it looks like I moved. My camera just died, even though I could have sworn it was fully charged. So anyways, we were talking about financial help. Yes. In today's, in the Western culture, we think we have to do things all by ourselves. Uh, I want to encourage you, it is okay to fundraise. You can ask your local church if they have any options for scholarships or ways that they can support you. And if they don't, maybe they know someone who just has a heart for the Lord, but they also have a lot of money sitting on their hands so they don't know what to do, that they would like to support you, even if it's a little bit. Um, a little bit over time, if you collect here and there, can go a really long ways. I know a lot of people do this when they work with like college ministries, like crew, they have to fundraise their own way. So it would probably be something like that. And if that is something that you're thinking about, I would look up those organizations to see, to see their template or to see how they encourage their staff to do that. Okay, last thing here is what can I expect from seminary? Well, anything that you do expect from seminary <laughs> probably is going to be way different. Uh, I came into seminary with low expectations, not low expectations of seminary, but just like zero expectations because I had no idea what to expect. So I came up with a list of three things about what you can expect. The first thing is you can expect to be challenged. Seminary is more than just sitting and reading your Bible and going to class and talking about it. It is so challenging, but I promise it is worth it. And it is not too challenging, like not so, so, so challenging that you can't get through it. It will be hard. You may cry at the library sometimes. You may cry over test scores or professor's comments, um, but that's okay. And if that does happen, you're not alone because I've been in all of those situations. The next thing is that you can expect to be loved. This one is really cool. Your professors are there to teach you about the gospel and teach you about God and, you know, reflect God's love onto you. So your professors are going to love you. Your classmates are going to love you. You can expect to be loved. I would definitely recommend making relationships, whether it's with your professors or classmates, those relationships are so special. And the third thing is you can expect to disagree with people in a healthy way. You'll probably have grown up at a different church than most of your classmates. Um, you might come from a different, different denomination like I did, and you might just come from a different background. I mean, your families are different. So you can expect to disagree with people, and that is okay. Um, you don't always have to be right, and if there's something that's really strong on your heart, you can say it, but also sometimes God works through silence as well. So expecting to disagree with people, definitely someone could have told me that and I'd have been like, okay. But really, some of these things that you believe and hold so firmly in your heart, someone might disagree with them. And that does not mean that God is not good. That does not mean that God is not loving. That just means that people grow up differently and that's okay. Just because they might think a little differently doesn't mean that they're wrong. 
And just because you might think a little differently does not mean that you're wrong. So I think that I covered a lot of the main questions when it comes to seminary. And if you have any more questions, like I said, please feel free to DM me on Instagram. You can comment them below. If you are in seminary and watching this and you have tips or ideas or different answers to these questions, comment them below and let people know. If you know someone who's thinking about seminary, send this video to them and share it. So I really hope that you enjoyed these two videos and that they were fruitful for you. So with that, don't forget to subscribe. You can leave a comment below, like this video, and share it. Do all of them. And... Yeah, if you want more content for next week's video, you can check me out on Instagram. You can sign up for True Blue News by following the link in my show notes. Or if you need to be prayed over, I would love to be praying for you. And I know the True Blue Faith community would as well. So you can fill out a confidential prayer request. So that's pretty much it. I will see you guys next week. And I hope you guys stay safe and stay healthy. And God bless. I just looked up. I literally look exactly like my mom with this haircut and the turtleneck and the sweatshirt oh my gosh i'm seeing her tonight so i'm gonna take a video i'm gonna make her put on her sweatshirt and i'm gonna share how much we look alike okay so i walked in and my mom was already wearing the white turtleneck so i told her to go put on the sweatshirt and look at this we look exactly the same <laughs> Okay, now we have all three of us <laughs> for Trans Seminary. Julia doesn't have a turtleneck and she has brown hair, but we all still <laughs> look alike. <laughs> <We need sweatshirt. laughs> okay, back to my mom's memo. Oh, I think that you should come join us for uh, and be a prayer warrior uh, on Anna's True Blue Faith. Follow the link below. <laughs> <laughs>